ever wanted to travel the world? I'm currently on Lamboan Island with Peter Searle, who I met yesterday. Peter lives on Lamboan. And Lamboan Island was very important in World War II, particularly for Australians. And we're going to at the War Memorial now. And you're going to tell us an interesting story about what exactly happened to you. Here at the uh, Lamboan War Cemetery, there are 4,000 Allied soldiers. Over 2,200 of them are Australian. And most of these soldiers are from the Australian 8th Division, which fell at Singapore, and the Japanese captured them, took them as prisoner of war to Sandakan, and then killed nearly all of them. There were no British soldiers who survived Japanese captivity. The six Australians who survived didn't survive in Japanese custody. They all escaped. At this war cemetery here, we've got less than half of the Australians were actually identified. So Peter, I can tell that you're really passionate about, you know, Labuan Island and, and the war history, but it is a very important part of World War II history for Australians. Um, can you tell me why? Where are we now? Well, Mark, if you look at the caption here, here on the 10th of September 1945, the commander of the 9th Division, Australian Imperial Forces, received the surrender of the 37th Japanese Army in North Borneo. The Japanese aren't known for surrendering. The 9th Division were the ones who were the rats of Tobruk. They had a stylized T on their shoulder pad when they came over here representing Tobruk. And when Sabah first obtained its independence, that stylized T found its way onto the Sabah flag of independence. We still have Sabahans come up to us and say, oh look, you're Australian, aren't you? And we say, yes. They say, well, my father told me to thank you for liberating us in the Second World War. Now, if I come up here, I'll show you a bit more of the story of it. If you can see, see Mark here, Labuan and Brunei Bay, Australia, 1945, the various versions, Balikpapan, Tarakan, Labuan Island. This is the Sundakan to run our death march. The number of Japanese involved at Tarakan was 2,100, and 1,540 of them were killed in battle. Only 550 were uh, prisoners. 8,000 were in Labuan, and over 1,000 of them died in battle. 5,000 were involved in Balikpapan, over 2,000 of them died in battle. And the Australian numbers were huge of the, of the 9th Division. So this is very much the end of the Second World War, and when Australia liberated Labuan, Sabah, uh, all of Borneo, it used Labuan as its headquarters and it tried the Japanese uh, criminals here and tried and executed them for, uh, uh, for crimes uh, of war, crimes against the Geneva Convention and for uh, decimating and killing the prisoners while they were in custody. And so we're, we're right on the beach here too and, and next door is the Peace Park. The Japanese yes, peace park. The, the Japanese did belatedly build this peace park here as a sort of method of saying uh, uh, saying sorry in a way. They haven't officially said sorry yet. They're not they're not uh, attuned to doing that. If you come around this way, you'll see this is right on the ocean, and the Japanese did in fact have a uh, a harbour and a naval base here, so they could shoot straight across the South China Sea. And once they were in the South China Sea they couldn't be hit by the submarines. The American submarines were controlling the Straits of Labuan, so Victoria Harbour, a deep harbour. Labuan means harbour. It's been uh, uh, named Labuan for over 500 years uh, in Malay, or Lalawan. And they couldn't use the deep harbour, they used this harbour because the American submarines controlled the area so well. All right, so Peter, we're just um, walking along the beach down from Surrender Point. Um, and I, I've got to admit, like, I'd never heard of Lamboan Island as a place that Australians fought, you know. And, and I, that, that cemetery that we went to, I don't think I've seen that many Australian graves and uh, unmarked graves apart from Gallipoli. And yet we've ne I've never heard of it. Yes, well, it is a very significant place for Australians in Australian history. Where we are now along the beach from uh, Surrender Point, this is where the Japanese Navy used to, used to berth themselves, according to the locals. Now it's all the fishing fleet, fishing boats down here. But it's a beautiful area for snorkeling and fishing now, but it's still a sacred site and a sacred place 
for Australians, especially whose loved ones fought in the Second World War. Can you see it becoming like a Gallipoli? Uh, I mean, the, the death mark was a march was a, a terrible history in, in any war. For, for some reason, Labuana and, and Sundakan Rana death march is a little bit of a forgotten war. There are a lot of other wars that get a lot more attention, uh, even wars where not as many Australian soldiers die. Uh, I've got a feeling it's got to do with the official Australian government stance after the Second World War when General Blamey was badly blamed and correctly for failing to rescue the Australians while they were still prisoners of war and the Australian Department of Defence effectively wanted to forget about ah, the one and right. concentrated on different areas. All right, so, so it could be about time that it was recognised as being a very significant place for Australians. Well look, thanks for your time Peter and thanks for the history lesson, it's been really interesting, thank you.